What is up guys, it's Solheim here, back with another Wrath of the Lich King classic video. Today we are taking a look at professions in Wrath of the Lich King, and comparing them to professions in TBC Classic, finding out what's different in Wrath of the Lich King. So let's start by talking about professions and profession bonuses when it comes to raiding. So in the Burning Crusade, most casters and healers chose tailoring because of the crafted tailoring sets, such as the Primal Mooncloth set for healers, and Frozen Shadow Weave or Spellfire for casters. These sets had absolutely insane set bonuses, that were really strong for a lot of casters and healers, making them a pretty much a must-have profession for those classes. You also had other items in the Burning Crusade such as Spell Strike Hood and Spell Strike Pants, which would give you a set bonus if you have tailoring, which was just yet another reason to have tailoring in the Burning Crusade. Now, in Wrath of the Lich King, we don't really have any of these tailoring sets, taking away that reason to grab tailoring if you're a caster. If we look at the Ebon Weave Robe, the Moon Shroud Robe, and the Spell Weave Robe, and even the Royal Moon Shroud Robe, all of which are supposed to be the Wrath of the Lich King version of the crafted set that we talked about for the Burning Crusade, we can see that these items don't bring any set bonuses for tailors, and they are also banned when equipped, so you don't need to have tailoring to equip these. That being said, there are some reasons to grab tailoring, it is, and it's not like tailoring is absolutely terrible. For example, you have different types of embroideries, such as the dark glow embroidery, which can enchant your cloak with a light or a chance to restore mana when you cast a spell, and you also have light weave embroidery, which can enchant your cloak with a chance to increase your spell power by 295 for 15 seconds when casting a spell, and there's even a reason to have tailoring if you're a melee character with the sword guard embroidery, which can be enchanted onto your cloak to sometimes increase your attack power by 400 for 15 seconds. So then, blacksmithing. In the Burning Crusade, blacksmithing was generally picked up by warriors, paladins, and even enhancement shamans, possibly other classes as well, but basically you picked up blacksmithing for blacksmithing specific weapons. For example, Blood Moon, Dragon Maw, Dragon Strike, and Lionheart Champion are all great weapons for different classes and different purposes, and they are also bound on pickup, or bound, yeah, bound on pickup, and you need to have blacksmithing in order to both craft and equip them. For Wrath of the Lich King, you still have craftable epic weapons and armor, but they are all bound on equip, so you don't need to actually be a blacksmith in order to equip them. That being said, blacksmithing is one of the best professions for raiding for a lot of classes in Wrath or Wrath of the Lich King, mainly due to the fact that blacksmith in Wrath have two extra socket slots, as they can add a socket to their bracers and their gloves. So I think you get the point by now, crafting professions in TBC had some bound on pickup items that made them great to have for PvE purposes, but for Wrath it is all bound when equipped, so it's all tradable, and the same can be said for leatherworking as well, where you had some decent bound on pickup items in TBC, and you still have decent epics in Wrath as well, but they are all tradable. That being said though, there are some bonuses to having leatherworking, such as stronger leg enchants, such as the Nerubian leg reinforcement, and you also have fur lining enchants in your bracers, giving you massive amounts of either attack power or spell power. So then, jewel crafting. Jewel crafting is pretty much the same as it's always been, you cut gems, you prospect ores to find gems, and you can craft rings, necklaces, and trinkets. In Wrath, there is a slightly bigger focus on crafting epic rings and necklaces, some of which are actually incredibly strong, and you can also equip 3 jewel crafting unique gems, providing a huge DPS increase, and this alone is a huge reason to grab jewel crafting in Wrath, as these gems actually provide you with a pretty decent DPS increase. Next up, let's talk about engineering. This profession is an absolute beast in Wrath of the Lich King. It is relatively the same as it's always been, but you now have a lot of different engineering specific enchants that have previously been either straight up crafted items or trinkets, but are now enchants that you can apply on your gear. For example, instead of having to equip nitro boots, 
you now have a Nitro Boots type of enchant that will greatly increase your movement speed. You also have a Parachute enchant on your cloak, you have a Mind Control enchant you can apply on your helmet, and most importantly, you have a massive Haste proc enchant that you can apply to your gloves, and this enchant makes engineering the best profession for PvE for roughly 75% of classes and specs in Wrath of the Lich King. So usually the best professions for raiding will be blacksmithing, jewel crafting and engineering, any combination of those three professions, where some classes will want different professions than others. For example, holy paladins will prefer blacksmithing and jewel crafting because they react so well to stats, while a lot of DPS classes capable of providing burst DPS will want the haste enchant from engineering, and this haste rating affects both melee and rage DPS alike. I also don't think we can talk about uh, profession changes in Wrath without mentioning Inscription, so let's talk about Inscription. First off, the practical aspect of Inscription when it comes to PvE, you get shoulder enchants that are better than all every other shoulder enchant in Wrath, giving you a slight edge in that aspect. For example, you get the Master's Inscription of the Axe, which gives you 120 attack power and 15 crit critical strike, you have the Master's Inscription of the Crank, which increases your spell power and gives you additional mana regen, the Pinnacle, which gives you dodge and defense, and of the Storm, which increases your spell power and critical strike. On a more general basis, scribes can also create trinkets and offhands, more specifically, Dark Moon cards, which can be turned into Dark Moon trinkets, some of which are actually quite strong. Scribes can also have the skill to craft glyphs which can alter the strength of your class. These glyphs are tradable, so you don't need to be a scribe to actually use them, but having the ability to make these is definitely a huge thing for scribes, and a good reason to actually pick up inscription, as some of these glyphs might end up being a little bit expensive. Scribes can also make weapon volumes and armor volumes. They can store enchants and makes it easier to buy and sell enchants, as these volumes or enchant scrolls can actually be put on the auction house, so now you can sell your enchants on the auction house. I also did not talk about mining, skinning or herbalism in this video, as those are all pretty much the same as they have always been, and I also left out alchemy and enchanting on purpose, as there's not a lot of changes to either of those professions, from the Burning Crusade to Wrath of the Lich King. So yeah, that is pretty much it guys, a bite-sized video on professions in Wrath of the Lich King, highlighting some differences between the Burning Crusade and Wrath of the Lich King. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did make sure you drop a like on it, it really helps out my channel and it also pushes the video into the almighty algorithm. And if you want more Wrath of the Lich King content, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again very soon.